Okay, good morning. morning. So today actually we'll discuss, we already, we already learned about option, option, uh, options actually as a basic, what a call option is, what a put option is. So by now, you should know how to get a payoff of a call option, which is S minus X. Of course, maximum zero. We're gonna do some practice later. You should know what a put option is, which is X minus S, right, for the payoff. You should know what the, after you subtract the premium, you get your profit or loss. And then we should know how the break even works. So we're not gonna go over in this uh, video. We're gonna go straight into valuating the premium. Up to now, I gave you the premium amount. Now we have to calculate the premium amount. What is fair, for example? Let's start with the most basic thing about fairness. So let's say you and I get on the coin toss, right? So a coin toss, and I give you, you put $10 down, I put $10, we'll put $20 down. If you get uh, heads, you win, I get tails, I win. So when you get heads and you win, you get only $15 out of the pot. But if I get tails, I win, I get $20. Is that a fair bet? No. No, why? Why is it not fair bet? Because the chance is 50-50. Yes, exactly. So the chance is 50-50. So the payoff is double the amount you put in. So the payoff in this case is $20, and your premium in option pricing is $10. So if I tell you that it's a 50% chance that you're gonna get paid $20 in an option, for example, then the premium you should pay is half of that. So the whole calculation about premiums is all about the probability of that payoff. And the calculation is different than a towing cost or a throwing a dice or playing blackjack or playing poker. It's basically the movement of the stock. But there are two things going on. The stock moves from now until expiration. Of course, you lock in the X, right? You want the stock to go higher when you have a call option because you pay the difference. If you have a put option, you want the stock to go lower to get pay the difference. So the stock is moving. Now, you pay the premium up front for that to lock in the X. So you have the right to buy and when you buy a call option and you have the right to sell when you have a put option. So you're looking at the S all the time. You pay the premium. Now what's interesting about this, this, as the stock is moving close to the X, it actually goes into the money. The premium itself changes because now the premium, whoever's gonna buy the premium for the remaining expiration, is gonna be more valuable to them because it's, the probability is getting closer to meeting that. So as you get closer to expiration, the premium changes. As the S is going up, the call option gets more expensive because now you're almost there. And the put option gets cheaper because the S got away from the put option. So constantly you're changing. So what's good about options is that you can get out of your premium. You don't have to wait until expiration. Just get out, look, I, I bought this $5 a premium that the stock is gonna go up 100. The stock is moving up, it's like a one of 10. The X is still out there. I'm making $10 already, I could expire, but what is the premium? The premium actually could be $10. Should be, um, you actually can sell your premium for a hard amount and get your return on the premium. So what I have here is exactly what the options are. I'm gonna just run the video and I'm gonna explain the concept, okay? Here is the, if you ever, anyone went to uh, horse races ever in their lives, very exciting, right? You sit there and you wait. What's going on in the horse races is different on options because you go into the window, you look at the odds, you say, okay, this horse is eight to one odds, I like it. You go there, you look at the horse going around, he's ready, man, look, I'm gonna make eight times my money. Everybody's thinking eight to one, it's like a donkey. There's no way he's gonna win. Eight to one, I take my chances. So you put your money down. You put $2, and if he wins, he makes 16. That's a good odds, you put $2. That's your premium. The payoff is 16, when? When 
the race is over. So the way you have to look at the whole round of the uh, horse race, that's the expiration. There's an expiration. There's gonna be a winner at the end of the day. The only difference is that you can't change your premium. You pay and you wait until the race is over. The option is different. Think about it that you can stop the race, freeze it if you can freeze it, and then you look at the guy next to you, look at my horse, man. He's eight to one, but he's second position now. He's getting closer to winning. What would you pay for my eight to one now? With well, eight to one, I change now. It might be six to one now, because now he's getting close to expiration. If he's first and it's only three meters left, probably that horse is you can make about sixteen dollars. You can get fifteen to get sixteen because it's right there. It's going to win. So that's how you have to look at it as you get closer to the expiration, closer to the time that you have to make a decision. That's when you sweat. That's when you're looking at the at the sitting at the horse races and you're yelling everything. Come on, come on, eight. You're right there, man. Come on. We're gonna get paid. And if he doesn't get, if he comes second, what happens? I lose my whole premium. Either you win or lose. If you have eight, you know, that horse to win, you're golden. If you come second, unless you had another bet to come second, you lost. That's what options are too, right? Because you bet, you don't exercise, you lost your bet. And that's the concept of this. Let's look at this race. So the, the pink guy coming out, you're gonna see the pink guy with a pink shirt. He's the favorite to win, okay? So he was going for two to one odds to win. And everyone else is different, and I, this is the one of the races. Okay, so we, we are off. We started our bet. You know, we got the pink guy as expected. He's actually, I looked at this guy in the pink in the front. He's a very good horse. He always likes to go first. And once he's first, a lot of handicappers, he says nobody can pass him. Once he gets to that position and keeps the race, it's gold, they're always happy because that's what he wants. The, rarely when he loses, is in here and can't catch up with the first guy. So right here, this is very valuable position. In the past, if I do the analysis, I've seen all his races, let's say I'm a, I'm a handicapped guy looking at all the races, he says this is good position for me. So if I paid a dollar now to make $2, I could actually sell it to the guy next to me at about 50 just in case he loses or something like that. So it becomes more valuable as you're getting closer. Let's continue. And this guy probably now, everybody's positioning now as if you do the odds why the race is going on. And is right there with her front to the inside, and then comes flashy sunrise. Fast Falcon goes up in between horses, and a gap of another two lengths back to keep me informed. And then the late running 10 year old. A little 10 year old. Those are three year olds. So that's the kind of scope in the front. Percussion is the first time we want to pipe in. Okay. Look at this guy. Way back. It's like a little don't come on, buddy. Ten years old. Ten years old in uh, four years. It's like nine years old. Okay, it's like running. Like, come on, get it. These guys are like three, four year old studs. That's it. There's no way this ten year old is way back there. So if I paid two dollars to win sixteen, this guy's probably like, let me get out of my bed now. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I get a dollar so I can cover my dollar. You know that kind of thing. That's the concept, right? We're way out of the money. That's the other council option. We're out of the money. Maybe there's a chance it's going to come through, but uh, let me get out of it, whatever. But you, again, the premiums continue. Working. Now racing four lengths off the lead. The ground saving run for Keep Me Informed is clear of Fast Falcon, and it's a good 10 lengths back to Aaron. Precaution. And really up front. That's expected. Their time at the back of the field of 48 and two half mile. Percussion. Going up the back stretch in front by two and a half lengths. A Belmont Stakes winner, Ruler on Ice, is running in second position. And then comes Quick Cap. Now, the Ruler of Ice, this guy here, number eight, he's one of the uh, top horses that was introduced at the time. So 
he actually was going well. It's one of the secret forces he can bet on the guy because he never raised this guy before. So he could be like the secret sauce, if you will. Okay? Sabatka in third, just to the inside. Then Bird Run, Keep Me Informed, Flashy Sunrise, they're all across the track. And Fast Falcon's getting closer now. Fast Falcon gains some ground, six and a half lengths off the lead. And Kaleida is even farther behind than he was before. He's way out of the race right now. They've gone three quarters of a mile in one, twelve, and four. And now they enter the far turn where the beat goes on for percussion, who's led every step. What are you doing? Come on! <laughs> I bet money on this guy! Jesus! Come on! What are you gonna do? When are you gonna make the move? I mean, they're turning the corner now. They're gonna turn the corner in a few minutes. How the hell is this guy's gonna win? I bet money on this thing. I got a good premium for it. Two dollars, make 16. Okay? If I put 200 dollars, I could make 1600 dollars. Team here of Aaron Ryder and this horse Kaleidoscopio because it is so hard 